As we patiently wait for Shadow of the Earth Tree to be released this June, I found myself wondering about the significance of shadows in the lands between. The land of Shadow is said to be a place locked away by Marika, and the very place where she became a god. Up to this point, the only significant mention of shadows would be those that were given to the Empyreans by their two fingers. Blythe is the shadow appointed to Rani, and we know Vargram the Raging Wolf aspired to be a shadow himself, possibly to the Glomide Queen. But the shadow that loomed largest over the lands between was arguably Malaketh, the Black Blade. This fearsome warrior wielded death in the service of Queen Marika, acting as her shadow. Today, we will be breaking down the life of Malaketh and the tragic story of the Bearer of Death, who was betrayed by the one person he was sworn to serve. Welcome back to Elden Lore, our weekly series where we break down the stories of the people, places, and shadows of the Lands Between. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the channel. With over 100 lore dives in our playlist, we hope you can find whatever stories you're looking for. But if not, just let us know in the comments so we can explore them for you. With Shadow of the Erdtree on the horizon, we hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel, as we will be thoroughly exploring everything the DLC has to offer, and we'll be bringing you the stories of the new characters and enemies found therein as soon as we can. We also have a Discord, where our community comes together to talk about their favorite FromSoft lore and theories. Whether you sub or not, we sincerely appreciate you choosing to spend some time with us today. And with that said, let's get back to the topic at hand. The story of Malakath most likely starts with his appointment to be Marika's shadow. As we know, shadows are appointed to Empyreans by their two fingers, and Marika was no exception. At some point, she herself received Malakath, who was meant to act as a loyal protector to the woman capable of housing the Elden Ring within her flesh. Thanks to his armor, we know he was treated not as a servant to Marika, but as more of a brother. Malaketh, Queen Marika's loyal half-brother, bore a blade imbued with destined death, and there was not one demigod who did not fear him. Champions knew what was at stake. Indeed, that is what made them champions. At some point during his time in her service, likely after she was the Elden Ring's vessel, as we assume Malaketh was already wielding his Black Blade, and Enya tells us the Rune of Death was plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation, he struck down those who opposed her ascendancy. The Godslayer's Greatsword tells us it was the Sacred Sword of the Glomide Queen who controlled the Godskin Apostles before her defeat at the hands of Malaketh. The Black Flames wielded by the Apostles are channeled from this sword. It's unclear if the Glomide Queen was a contender to become a vessel alongside Marika, or if she presented herself sometime after, but either way, when she pit her sword against that of the Black Blade himself, it was Malaketh who came out on top. We can assume that through the years Malaketh acted as a loyal companion to Queen Marika, keeping her safe from all who would stand in her way. His blade was imbued with the Rune of Death itself, and the demigods feared him due to his ability to truly end their lives. Aside from the Black Flame of the Godskin Apostles, no other power in the Lands Between could achieve this, and for a time, his presence was enough to keep upstarts in the ranks of the Golden Order in place. He even commanded his own forces in the form of the Valiant Gargoyles, whose weapons are mended with black corpse wax. Such is the mark of those who serve Malaketh, the Black Blade. Alongside his gargoyles, he was a force to be reckoned with. However, the fear he commanded could only halt the plans of conspirators for so long, and on one fateful night, Malaketh failed in his duties. So the story goes that Rani the Witch stole a fragment of the Rune of Death from Malaketh as he slept, allowing her, through fearsome rite, to create the god-slaying black knives so that she could slay her Empyrean flesh. Of course, this could only be done by slaying the soul of Godwin the Golden simultaneously, which she achieved. This marks Malaketh's first failure in his duties to his queen and sister. But perhaps, this turn of events is exactly what she wanted. 
The remembrance of the Black Blade tells us, Malaketh was a shadow-bound beast given to his Empyrean. Marika's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away destined death. Even then, she betrayed him. How is it that Marika would have betrayed Malaketh? He protected the rune of death she removed from the Elden Ring and imbued in his sword. But somehow, Ronnie was able to procure a fragment without anyone noticing. Perhaps Marika was well aware of Ronnie's plans and allowed them to happen, betraying the very duty that was granted to Malaketh in the form of his sword. After all, his true purpose was to lock away destined death. Simply carrying it in his sword was not enough. He would need to bind it within himself, an action he would take after the Night of Black Knives. If we obtain his weapon, we learn the following. Malaketh's Black Blade once harbored the power of the Rune of Death. It is a sad shadow of its former glory. After a fragment of death was stolen on that fateful night, Malaketh bound the blade within his own flesh, such that none might ever rob death again. Interestingly, upon doing this, the black flame wielded by the Godskin Apostles lost its power to deliver true death, as the incantation scouring black flame tells us. The black flame could once slay gods, but when Malaketh sealed destined death, the true power of the black flame was lost. It would seem that while death was removed from the lands between after the rune of death was imbued into his sword, the true power of death did not disappear entirely from the land until after the blade itself was sealed within Malaketh. Indeed, this could be the betrayal the remembrance refers to. In order to seal death away, Marika needed Malaketh to bind it into his very being, an action that would leave him a shadow of his former self, with a new, insatiable hunger for the very death that was released upon the land on the Night of Black Knives. Once we weed our first piece of death root, we can read its description. A source that gives rise to those who live in death. The beast clergyman, found at the bestial sanctum in the distant east, collects and devours these roots. On the night of the dire plot, the stolen rune of death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the rune of death spread across the lands between through the underground roots of the great tree, sprouting in the form of death root. We are then approached by D, Hunter of the Dead, who tells us of a mysterious beast known as Garonk, the beast clergyman, who he currently gathers death root for. D has his own business to attend to, and Garonk has been looking for a warrior to replace D so that all pieces of death root across the lands between can be gathered and disposed of. Once we make our way through a portal shown to us by D, we stand face to face with the beast clergyman and learn of his hunger. Upon meeting Garonk, he asks that we feed him the death root we plucked from the tibia mariner and provides us with the beast eye in order to help us find more death root. As we feed him, he tells us of his hunger and after our fourth encounter, he will attack us on sight. Once we deal enough damage, he will stop telling us. Put it away. I won't forget again. My appetite. My sin. So please, enough. This is the first time he refers to his sin, and after the fifth piece of death root, he refers to death itself, or rather, the death root, as his sin. It's not until we have given him six pieces that we receive Stone of Garonk and learn the truth of his origins. Superior incantation taught by Garonk, the beast clergyman, hurls a boulder before the caster. Long ago, Garonk was a beast of such terrifying ferocity that his former name meant death of the demigods. This is our first indication that Garonk, the beast clergyman, is actually Malaketh, the Black Blade, death of the demigods. 
After nine pieces of death root, Gronk will say, It is... It is all consumed. Still, I am not sated. Not nearly sated. America! Is this what it is to sin? Will things never be the same again? <sighs> Tarnished. My thanks for thy long labor. But I have done all I can in this land. Henceforth, mine appetite shall be my sole companion. Farewell. It would seem Malekith believed that if he could consume all of the death root created by Godwin's corpse after the Night of Black Knives, that he could undo his mistake in letting a piece of the Rune of Death be taken from him. But it was all for naught, as his hunger persists. We do not see Garonk again until facing him in crumbling far Missoula. After many trials and tribulations, our Tarnished makes their way to the end of crumbling far Missoula so that we may claim destined death and set fire to the Erd Tree. This is the only way to claim our throne as Elden Lord, but a familiar face stands in our way. Our companion, Garonk, stands before us and has different dialogue options based on whether or not we weeded all nine pieces of death root across the lands between. If we did not finish his quest, he will say, Thou who approacheth But if we did, Garonk recognizes us. Tarnished. Why wouldst thou? Why? It is no matter. We must then do battle with the beast clergyman a fight that was unavoidable once his true nature is fully confirmed halfway through our battle. After dealing enough damage, Garonk realizes he cannot win as he is and releases destined death, his black blade, from his flesh. Oh, death. Become my blade once more. We then see Malekith in all his brilliance, and our battle begins anew. Malekith wields the Black Blade expertly, attacking us with red and black waves of death from a distance, and closing the gap between us with a jump or a slash. We can see why the demigods feared him, as this battle is a trial not so easily overcome. Once we do manage to put an end to Malekith, there are again two different dialogue options depending on whether or not we collected death root. If we did not collect every piece, he says, to kill what? But if we have helped him complete his quest, he seems to better understand our goal. Restored. 
We then watch as the rune of death forms before us and is unleashed across the lands between. Malekith has failed in his duties again, this time felled by our hand. And unlike last time, it's not merely a peace that found its way into the lands between, but the full, unrelenting strength of death. Malekith was a noble shadow plucked from his home and given to Marika so that she might have protection as she gained strength and became a suitable vessel for the Elden Ring. He fulfilled his duty as best he could, and likely would never have failed in the first place, if not for the machinations of those with far more power than he himself could wield. We know he was betrayed by his Empyrean, by Queen Marika. And truly, what chance did Malekith have when his own sister had a hand in making him fail at his duties? Malekith did everything he could to right his wrongs, even binding the rune of death to his very flesh and going into hiding so that he could protect it from the world, only interacting with those he could send out to weed Deathrood as further penance for the tragedy he allowed to happen under his watch. Unfortunately for Malekith, he was just another pawn for those who held true power in the lands between, and he never truly had a chance of fulfilling his duty to protect the rune of death. For as long as others would seek its power, he would always have new challengers, and no one can win forever. Before wrapping up this exploration of Malekith, I wanted to put forward a theory about the shadows of Empyreans in the Lands Between. E.G. tells us that Blythe was given to Rani by her two fingers, and the remembrance of the Black Blade told us Malekith was given to Marika. So in the past, Many have assumed that shadows were crafted by the two fingers. But what if they already existed beforehand? Some argue that Malekith and Blythe are a form of Beastman from Far Missoula, but they're far too unique in my opinion for this to be the case. Now we have knowledge of the Land of Shadows, which has a culture all its own, which seems to put some emphasis on various forms of beasts. What if the Empyrean shadows don't come from the fingers, or from the home of the beastmen, but from the land of shadows itself. After all, in our introduction to the DLC, the tarnished they chose to enter the land of shadows was Vargram, the very tarnished who wished to become a shadow himself. Thank you for joining us for our breakdown of the life and story of Malekith the Black Blade. I know many other channels have already told his story, but we wanted to provide our breakdown of his timeline and his possible origin in the Land of Shadows, which could be explored in Shadow of the Earth Tree. Do you believe Empyrean shadows come from the Land of Shadow? Did Marika intentionally allow Rani to steal a piece of destined death from Malekith? Even with the evidence we've presented, are you one of the few who still believes Garonk and Malekith are not one and the same? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and set notifications to all so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.